anywhere from third to eighth or ninth or whatever it might be. Um, and we're an example of, of that right now. We're two and three and could very well easily be four and one. And that's disappointing. The Boise game was, uh, was disappointing. And yet, at the same time, I was proud of our guys for competing. And uh, got down the first half, got down the second half, uh, kept battling. Uh, you know, got themselves back in a position to win. Then when you're in a position to win and don't win, obviously, uh, you know, that's that's not a lot of fun. Uh, if we get a stop here or there or, uh, you know, the last shot goes in, a whole, whole different deal. But uh, we don't have a whole lot of time. We'll show a few clips today of, of just some blatant errors that, that would have, um, you know, would have made a difference. Uh, you know, uh, but then we're on to, on to Vegas. Uh, We've got to, in a hurry, try and get prepared for them. And and what I see with them, watching them uh, on film, on tape, is just a very athletic group that presents so many problems with their athleticism, problems on the boards, problems trying to guard them. Uh, you know, UNLV's always had really good athletes, and, and this group is no exception to that. So, um, you know, they went on the road and got a great win at at New Mexico, and uh, you know, I'm sure they feel they've been uh, a little inconsistent, as as uh, as a lot of us probably feel right now. But uh, got a premier player in, in Dijon Jones, uh, but have a lot of other weapons to go with him. We're very familiar with Ola Kabi from his days at Fresno. Uh, they're monsters on the boards. They're two big guys, just uh, pound the boards and. For some reason, that's been a, a little bit of a, an issue with us lately. So that's a that's a key stab. But uh, you know, and then uh, you always are concerned about your own team's health. Uh, you know, Jared's missing a tooth, and uh, you know, Kyle's uh, unable to go today. Uh, will not practice today. Good news is it's not uh, season ending, uh, but don't know for sure if we'll have him at all uh, versus UNLV. We'll just have to see. He's kind of day to day. What did they say his knee injury was? Hi, his, in, in layman's terms, his kneecap popped out, popped it back in. Uh, obviously that causes some soreness and discomfort, but nothing uh, nothing structural at this, at this point. So uh, just how soon he can get moving around given that, you know, that injury. Um, is that sort of the, uh, related to what he was kind of struggling with earlier in the season, the kneecap issue? Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't think so. He, no, no, he uh, sprained his knee earlier in the year. It wasn't a kneecap. You very rarely over the years had a guy like Watkins did against him rebounding wise. I mean, he just looked like he was so amped up to go after everything. Yeah, he's, he, you know, they get you so spread out, for one thing, with their offense, and then he gets a ton of runoff. Your, your bigs have to come help because they're driving downhill so much, and then he's left over there uh, rebounding against the guard a lot of times. And we, we didn't do a real good job. That happened some, and then some we didn't. He got his own miss, and there's really no excuse for that. Uh, just, you know, just how quick this knew where it was going, whatever you want to say, but... Uh, he did a good job. I mean, he presents uh, when he gets any time a guy gets ten offensive rebounds, he's doing something right. Now, this Ross Joe Smith, I think, leads the nation or pretty close to it in rebounding. Doesn't he? This, is he a similar type rebounder? Very active, very uh, very athletic, uh, relentless kind of. You know, more athletic than Watkins, so that's the good news. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, they're. Both those guys are getting 10 rebounds a game in the league, so you know that's our ability to not give them second shots. And the one thing is, uh, you know, they're not shooting a great percentage in the league, so there are a lot of second shots, and and they're finding a way to gobble them up. And that's where uh, Kyle would really be missed if you don't have him in the game, obviously. With what he can well, he's our leading rebounder. You know, I mean, he's. Uh, He's, he's kind of knows himself for the ball. I mean, he does a good job on the board. So, yeah, that, that won't help matters if we don't have him.
Um, you know, you look at the stats, and, and you guys have been shooting well from three, but UNLV really defends well from the perimeter. What have they done to kind of limit some of those uh, long-range shots? They're just, uh, they, they just play pressure man-to-man, -man, uh, you know, and they, um, that's what has been the deal at UNLV for a long, long time, is to deny your passes. Uh, they don't, you know, they don't help a lot in the post, so they're, getting out to three-point shooters. And when you have as much team quickness as they do, it takes you a lot less time to recover. So it's, it's uh, their style of defense is one thing, but again, their athletes are, are a big reason their style of defense works. Um, I mean, when you look at this team, are there significant imprints that you feel like Dave Rice really has? Like, this is what a Dave Rice team does or anything like that? I, I don't know the answer to that, Kyle. Dave's doing a good job. I, I don't know. I mean, he's, all you got to do is look at his record since he's been there. They're, they've won a lot of games. Other than a Lakey Bay, it looks like most of the rest of them shoot twos. They must take the ball in the basket, the rest of the guys. Is that what they do? Yeah, they're, you know, they're, their strength is, uh, is a, I know I keep saying it, but their athleticism. So, you know, they go by you because they're quicker than you. And they get into the lane and we've got to help. And uh, a Lakey Bay is the one guy that's, Standing out there shooting a pretty good percentage from three. Some of their other guys take some threes. And, uh, for example, their point guard made a few last game. They're, they're just a little bit streaky. And, you know, that's knock on wood that they can <laughs> peak streaky on Wednesday night. Um, Thomas and Mac, having an experience there, do you feel like it's going to be valuable when you guys get to Mount West tournament in the postseason? Mm. No, I'd rather play the Mount West tournament on a neutral side. <laughs> uh, it's not going to be, you know, that that will always great on me. I, I mean, I don't think anybody in, would feel like their experience in the spectrum is a good deal when, if they had to come back here for the tournament. Do you? I just meant, is it? I know what you meant, but that's my answer. <laughs> so do what you want with it. <laughs> Put you on this the sixth man competition with the fans and stuff. And obviously, the Spectrum's been a like, great place for you guys. What does the fans mean to you guys? I mean, that's a fans travel up the boys to do. Yeah, you know, I, I don't uh, think there's only been a couple times this year where, the, because of the holidays and because of the nature of the schedule, where we've seen the, the Spectrum uh, in a lot of the, in the form that it has been a lot of the previous years. Uh, so that's. When it's at its best, it's as good as it gets. And hopefully we can see it at its best come Saturday night. I'm a little concerned about two 9 p.m. games in a row. Uh, not for the not for the students. They're just they're just getting woke up about that. I mean that's that's when you rock and roll as a college kid is about 9 p.m. So, but you know for our general admission people, just the time of the game is is kind of kind of a late deal. But um, you know, I think we, if you look at that six-man contest and you say, okay, let's...